Justin, if Bitcoin does take over the world's reserve currency, they're going to have to make a vital choice between a store of value and a medium of exchange, aka Triffin's Dilemma 2.0. Justin explains what Triffin's Dilemma is and the choice Bitcoiners are going to have to make. Robert Triffin identified a paradox back in the 60s saying that a country's local unit of currency would have an inherent conflict if it was also the world's reserve unit of currency. And basically, he was referring to the dollar. Here's the problem. It's that as more and more people use dollars as the world reserve currency, that is, as a store of value function, for example, they denominate debt in it, uh, they settle oil in it, whatever, right? It, it demands more and more dollars to be created into existence. We use bank lending to do this, which is its own separate problem. But the point is, is that the store of value is facilitated by people hoarding dollars. As dumb as it and as uh, as blasphemous as it sounds to the Bitcoiners or the crypto guys to hodl dollars, that's basically what's going on. The problem and the, or the tension arises from this when it comes to the domestic like exchange of value, you know, and it's not just in the domestic United States, it's all across the world or whatever, right? In order to, you know, price, you know, cars, oil, airfare, whatever, in terms of dollars, you actually, th th this, this isn't a store of value. This is a medium of exchange function. And the problem is, is that if the medium exchange functions becomes corrupted by the store of value function or vice versa, you have issues. Here's an example of what I mean. If people get hodling dollars, the price of the dollars go over. Let's think about the Dixie going up in relation to all the other fiat currencies. The problem as a result of this is that it costs more dollars to buy the same amount of gas to buy the same you know commodities or whatever right and this is what you've seen kind of across the world the most notable example not to get too esoteric would be what's going on right now with euro dollar debt being dominated in dollars as dollars get more expensive the, the, the debt payment stays the same you need more units of your local currency to send into dollars because the dollars are appreciating why the dollars are appreciating because people are fleeing to the dollars to use as a store of currency because they're hodling dollars which puts pressure on the dollars and there's not enough dollars out there a very very long-winded way of saying there are kind of like two functions immediately apparent that we need money to do store value and act as just the way that we can price goods and services in and you kind of need two units of currency for each and i think if you take this a step further and this is what crypto i think has shown many people is that bitcoin i suspect will be an ultimately an excellent store of value it's not necessarily my cup of tea but there are many people who who do like it and it's definitely has a following credit where credits do but to actually like transact in bitcoin and i know people are going to say lightning and all this stuff J just hear me out hear me out hear me out hear me out but like if you're if you're trying to price stuff in bitcoin and if people constantly hodl bitcoin which makes perfect sense because if you have a fixed asset asset cap and the price of Bitcoin, if you believe is always going to go up, why on earth would you spend it save, you know, the absolute bare minimum? So I think for a store function, you know, it's absolutely, you know, just what the doctor ordered. But to say that Bitcoin can also be a medium of exchange, that's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. It's not fair to the peg, it's not fair to the hole. And the reason it can't be a good medium of exchange is because people get hodling, it's not getting recycled back into the system. It's not getting recycled back into the system. The price of Bitcoin is going up, which means that when you're trying to transact in it, you're going to get these really, really weird price distortions because you won't necessarily know how to make a clean, clean sweep. I think the solution to this is well, and well, justin i need to defend the bitcoiners here i'll take yeah. the opposite role here's what i think the main argument would be that is the main purpose of bitcoin justin it has a fix a pie cly cap therefore it's going to infinitely go up forever the exponential age as mr Rao Powell calls it uh how could that ever be a bad thing well, the, the problem is like if, if you're pricing goods and services in Bitcoin, or let's say like you want to borrow in Bitcoin, like take a page from Rickard's book or whatever, right? Like if you're using a store of value to borrow against Bitcoin, who in their right mind would, would borrow in Bitcoin say, I'm going to pay you back a Bitcoin later? Like let's say that the, let's just say once once Bitcoin becomes fully adopted, everything's fully mined or whatever, right? Let's just say Bitcoin, numbers out of my back, it appreciates it at 10% a year or whatever, right? Let's say you're a company, you want to build a factory, but you need to borrow Bitcoin to do this. And let's say you're really, really kick ass, you really know what you're doing, but the best you can, and remember you're competent, you're, and you're intelligent, but the best you can pull out is let's say a 15% rate of return on your assets. Well, of that 15%, 10% is immediately going to the interest that you're having to pay on just the appreciation of Bitcoin. And that's before you even have to worry about what you're actually having to pay in interest on the loan itself. Part of me, 10% of that immediately going to the appreciation of Bitcoin, you know, and then that's in addition to whatever interest and principal payments you have to make. And so, like, you really don't want to borrow against it. But that's not to like take away or tarnish, you know, the store of value, which is, I think, really the end goal of what many Bitcoiners have. And Josh will take it a step further. I think what we're going to see, and you see this going on with the geopolitical situation in Russia right now, is I think you're going to see commodities and essentially become their own coin. Or when I say that, like, at the end of the day, commodities are what all wealth is grounded on many people think of you know the big four silver gold platinum and palladium but you can think of you know oil wheat whatever just commodities in general and so i think what you really need ideally is that you would have multiple stores of value including government issued fiat i would say would also be 
would, would, would also fall under this category for those who for those who choose to engage in it. So you would have these multiple stores uh, of value, and people choose, you know, what they want to store the value in. And this is a key thing. This is why I don't think Bitcoin stands for the solution, but rather why you need a neutral unit of account to go between these various things, something that can settle in say three to five seconds, really quick. So the point is, you're not trying to hold the neutral unit of account; you're just using it to jump in and then immediately jump out with incredibly low slippage where you can get a real-time quote. So for example, like let's say, I don't know, your Joe's six pack or whatever, right? And for whatever odd reason, you want to store your value in wheat or whatever, right? Well, you you can do that. You know, you get paid in whatever currency and you just basically use this neutral unit of currency to jump in and jump right back out to wheat. And bam, there's your store of value. Or you have a little bit in Bitcoin, a little bit in gold, a little bit in dollars, whatever the dollar, or whatever, right? But the, the key thing is, is that you have this delineation between these two these two functions. And more importantly to the point, and this gets back in Triffin's dilemma, is that the neutral unit of account doesn't try to be the store of value. It just is the intermediary to facilitate transactions and provide price data amongst all the other commodities of which Bitcoin and the, all the other commodities we're used to today are part of. So basically, I hear you saying that um, Bitcoin will be trend, like is not a if, if it wants to be a store of value, it cannot also be the everyday transactable unit of, of currency by the, the masses just because it does not make mathematical sense if it's still appreciating that 10 percent because there would just be zero liquidity in the entire global market. Yeah. I think Lynn Alden, I believe it was Lynn or maybe, or maybe it was Brent Johnson. I think it was Lynn Alden. I think Lynn Alden basically made the comment that there's no recycling mechanism because if people huddle Bitcoin, it's not going to go back into the economy. Now, if you want to store a value, this is exactly what it's designed to do. And arguably, Bitcoin is doing exactly what it's, uh, not to speak for the maxis, because I'm certainly not one, but there's certainly, you know, an appeal to using it as a store of value and it functioning, you know, appropriately as such. But to think that can also be the, the unit of exchange, I think that's, my, my answer would be this. We tried a version of this with the dollar in the 60s. Triffin identified the paradox in the 60s and look at where we are at today. And so rather, and try to put a square peg in a round hole, I think the square peg should go in the square hole, like Bitcoin using as a store of value. And then we need a third, or we we, we, we need an alternative to be that, 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 that neutral unit of account. Again, it's not trying but to be a store here, of value. Here's what I think would actually happen. If we had a gold-backed system for a long time, but what happened? The economy continued to grow, and there was concrete actual productive demand for loans that people were going to find a way to satisfy so what would they do they say you know what this is a really solid business i'm going to give you uh iou bitcoin and i'm going to give you this loan because i know that you're good for it because the monetary system wanted to grow and it was dying for it and it needed to to functionally yeah. if we want to grow at the rate that we were going to grow at they had to expand the lending market. And if Bitcoin wants to be a store of value like gold was, and gold is today what we have now see gold as, it cannot serve both purposes. And we saw gold fail at this. You need something that is fungible. As much as I hate the dollar, the dollar is fantastic at that. Buying your everyday goods and services, you need something that you buy, you sell, and you just transact it every single day. But you also want that a global unit of measurement that you could hold as a store of value today it's gold i i tomorrow i absolutely think it could be bitcoin and i would like to see a situation where instead of just having two choices you have unlimited choices exactly for everything and that's where yeah. i think me and justin agree that bitcoin will never be the solution but it is a a potential solution. oh yeah Exactly. Yeah. And I think the solution that makes all this work is, 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 is you need the interoperability chain. You, again, you, you need the neutral reserve asset to intermediate between all these things. So, and, wh and what, what, what do you think will that will be in the case of? Oh, I think I know what the case is, Josh. And so do you. It's the delisted standard XRP. Oh, I, I, I actually didn't. I completely forgot that you were an XRP nut for a second. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't have an edge there. If I had to take a guess, I think that uh, Keynes's approach could actually be pretty viable, where you have a, a basically a group of commodities that kind of are used as a as a standard uh, type of currency that is much more fungible. But I have, I have oh, absolutely. Well, but see, but remember the Bancor. See, the Bancor evolves. So the stillborn Bancor evolves ultimately into the SDR, and even the SDR is a basket. See, that's the thing, right? You can redeem the SDR for whatever you want, right? Where I can see IMF balance sheet, where the IMF is issuing IOU, you know, whatever is whatever, right? But see, it's still the same thing. It's still the same thing where you have the Bancor acting as a neutral unit of account, which basically just tags back into whatever, you know, the fiat standard is behind it. Like, it's the exact same damn thing.
Yeah, this basically just shows that there is no perfect money, or if there is, we've we've yet to see it. A, a perfect money that could be used as a a unit of of trans a big transactability as well as a store of value because i don't think that is feasible possible over the long term oh, looking at a a 200 year time horizon I, I do not see a currency it would it would have to be something that could grow unlimited amounts but was was restricted at the same time to only be towards productive things and it, that I, it's not possible because humans are flawed fundamentally. Yeah. Well, see, again, I, I, I think that you're framing it wrong, Josh, on that front, in the sense that it's not like there's a singular money. It's that, like, no, we have square pegs and we have square holes yeah, and exactly. triangles yeah, exactly. or whatever. Uh, and what I would also say, too, sorry, Josh, go on. I completely yeah. agree with you because, as you were just saying, I mean, there are roles for stuff. And I just don't think Bitcoin's role it will either have to choose between being the transaction or between the store of value. And I think the masses have already chosen it to be the store of value. Oh yeah, no, I would concur with that. And, and I, th I think that was the right choice, just to be clear. Like, I think they made the absolutely right choice on that front. But as I would say about human infallibility, the answer is that yeah, humans are always fallible. So you've got to build a system that's designed to work with fallible humans. And I think the way you do that is you let people choose whatever they want to choose for their store of value. And then you let them move freely in between it because that way people can vote in mass, you know, with their feet. In other words, trust the wisdom of crowds to keep, you know, the system honest. Or back up, you have a trustless system and you basically bank on, you know, the masses, which I think on the whole can actually provide price signals and data, assuming it's not being distorted looking at you, central banks, but whatever. So that still just takes us to the same question is, is what is going to be the system that is decentralized, but also uh, for the transaction? That's not a, let's say, a global uh, or U.S. based um, dollar, but a decentralized um, currency like that. I mean, like, look, I'm not trying to be like a dick here, but like a three to five second transaction settlement period and the ability to issue subcurrencies on it, like it was custom built for this. It was custom built for it. Well, I, I think you can make that same argument for Bitcoin because the Lightning Network will improve no. and, and the transaction speeds will, uh, let's say, it gets down to instant, instant um, transactions. You could you could make that same argument for them. It doesn't have the bandwidth to absorb Swift. Whatever becomes the world reserve currency has to be able to take on whatever Swift is doing and then some. Well, I Lightning think Bitcoiners would say that as of right now, you might be right, but the rate of improvement would suggest that that will be possible in the future. Maybe. But then again, the early bird gets the worm. Well, I have no clue. I mean, we don't even know. I, I just hope that I'm smart enough to, to, to sniff up whatever's coming when we see it. So, Fair enough. Now, I'm sure we've pissed off everyone in this video. So the gold bugs, yeah, we, we, we the pissed bugs, off Bitcoiners, yeah. we've pissed off the XRPers, we've pissed off the uh, the dollars, uh, the gold bugs. I mean, there's not a single person left. So if you guys are left, you too.